at the Ince Locker Arena in Scranton, Pennsylvania at Marywood University. This is Marywood Pacers women's basketball tonight. It is the front half of a doubleheader, men and women. Tonight the women take on Clark Summit University in their first matchup of 2018. Hi everyone and Happy New Year to you all at home. I'm Brendan Murphy, glad to be with you tonight. The women are coming off a one-on-one -one road trip to Nashville, Tennessee where they played in the Music City Classic. They played relatively well down there. They did get a big win over Keene State University. And we'll first start off with the who's in the spotlight and we'll start with Gab Giordano. The way she played in that Keene State game, she put up a double-double, 19 points to go along with 10 rebounds. A tremendous performance for her. And their last home game of 2017, Erica Bistrin put up a great game against Widener. She had 20 points and five rebounds. So on the other side for Clark Summit, we're gonna start with Tori Erdman. She is the team leader in scoring as well as rebounds, averaging just shy of 19 points a game and about seven and a half rebounds per game. And Randy Traxler, a freshman point guard, is averaging about 18 points a game and 3.2 assists. So we are just about set to go, so when we come back, we'll have the starting lineups and the opening tap right here on TVM. As always, the NCAA Colonial States Athletic Conference in Marywood University promote good sportsmanship by student athletes, coaches, and spectators. We request your cooperation by supporting the participants and officials in a positive manner. Profanity, racial, or sexist comments, or other intimidating actions directed at officials, student athletes, coaches, or team representatives, as well as the public intoxication, the consumption or possession of alcoholic beverages and tobacco products are grounds for removal from the site of competition and other disciplinary actions. Now let's introduce the starters. First, for the visiting defenders. Number 10, a junior guard from Sealands Grove, Tori Erdman. Number 12, a senior guard from Scott Township, Natalie Tuffy. Number 32, a freshman guard from Dublin, Georgia, Randy Tressler. Number 33, a freshman guard from Millerton, New York, Hannah Knapp. And number 45, a freshman center from Base of New York, Hannah Scarborough. Clark Summit is coached by Lori Huckabee in her second season. Assistant coaches Kyle Keltner, Sarah Long, and Kayla Keltner. 
And now let's give a hand for the starters for your Marywood Pacers. And welcome back to the Insulaco Arena as we are right now hearing the starters for each team. So we'll start for Clark Summit. And they are led by Tori Erdman, the junior guard, the 5'8 guard, number 10. Natalie Tuffy, a 5'4 senior, number 12. Randy Traxler, the 5'6 freshman, number 32. Hannah Knapp. The 5'1's freshman, number 33. And Hannah Scarborough, the 5'8 freshman, number 45. And for the Pacers, Marissa Fernandez-Tierney gets the start, the 5'7 freshman, number three. Erica Bistrin, the 5'8 freshman, number five. Alyssa Olson, the 5'8 junior, number 25. Natasha Hessling, the 5'9 junior, number 34. And Gab Giordano, the 5'7 freshman, uh, uh, junior, pardon, uh, number 35. And we are just about set to go. And we are underway as the Pacers win the tap. Bistrin has it in the corner. Pass inside to Hessling. That shot, I think, is blocked. And we'll, we'll head the other way. So Clark Summit is in the road blue. They move left to right on your screen. And the Pacers in the home white move right to left. That's Scarborough, she gives it over to Traxler. Erdman has it at the top. The shot is off. Rebound pulled down by Fernandez Tierney, they get it up to Giordano. Giordano cross pass to Alyssa Olsen. Bistrin in the corner for three, that comes off. Rebound pulled down by Hannah Knapp. And a travel will be called. And Fernandez Tierney will bring it up. They get it over to Hessling. Hessling drives. Olsen in the corner, shot for three, that comes off. And it will head the other way. That's Traxler. Gets it over to Tuffy. Erdman has it at the top. Stolen away as they head the other way. Pass inside to Hessling, shot is good. Traxler gets it over to Erdman. And a shot clock violation. So it will go the other way. Giordano's shot for three is good. And it is five nothing Pacers.
Erdman drives, gets tied up, and, and we have a jump ball. So as I mentioned in the open, the Pacers were in Nashville, Tennessee over the weekend to play in the Music City Classic. They beat Keene State University 62 to 40 on Friday night and they lost to Wheaton College of Illinois on Saturday night, 75-42. But they're back home for the new year and Natasha Hessling is on the board. Pass inside to Erdman. Scarborough with it, and she gets the bucket, and the defenders are on the board. A cross court pass, all full court pass for Giordano, and the bucket is good. I'd like to apologize, we are actually having some technical difficulties with one of our cameras, so if at any time you see the screen go black like it is actually right now, I will try my best to commentate the game as if it were a radio broadcast, and Randy Traxler knocks down a three. Gab Giordano brings it up the other way, that is knocked away by Scarborough. Coming the other way is Traxler. Erdman at the top of the key. Gives it over to Tuffy. Tuffy's shot for three is long, and it is out of bounds. Last touch by Fernandez Tierney. So it will stay with the defenders. And the Pacers will bring in four subs. Sam Bruno has checked in. The 5'11", uh, freshman number 12. That shot by Tuffy is no good as it hits the shot clock. Katie Nealon has checked in, the 5'6", senior number 24. Lisa Staken, the 5'5", five five senior number 11. And Kate Riley, who takes a three, it's no good. Rebound pulled down by Traxler. She is also checked in, the 5'9", freshman number 14. Traxler thought about a step back three, but thought better of it. Erdsman's shot comes off. Staken will bring it the other way. Running up the court is Riley. Riley's shot is no good, but she is called for the walk, and it will go the other way. Well, now we got some video up on camera, on our camera one, so you can see this end of the action. Traxler will bring it up, the pass inside to Erdman. The turnaround layup is good, and it will come back the other way. Giordano finds Nealon in the corner. Nealon, that's a long two, it's good. Katie Nealon is on, and there we go, there's camera two, there's our game cam. Traxler pass inside to Erdman. Shot no good. Rebound pulled down by Giordano. Giordano flying up the court. Finds Nealon. Pass for Bruno. They get it back out to Staken. Giordano for three. That's good. Eight points thus far already for Gab Giordano. Danny Mansberg, the 5'5", freshman number three, has checked in for Clark Summit. And in the interim, we have a foul on Bruno. That's her first. 
That is the first foul of the game at the 3.30 mark in the first quarter. It's a long way to go without a foul. First free throw is good from Erdman. Abjudana will take a seat. Araya Angst will check in, the 5'8 freshman, number 15. And Erdman goes two for two. Staken drives. Riley finds Angst. Angst drives. Shot no good. There was contact, but no foul called. And Bruno gets the lay in to go. Traxler driving on Nealon. Tuffy gets it over to Erdman. She gets a screen from Katie Swan just into the game. That shot is off, rebound pulled down by Bruno. They get it up to Riley, Riley bringing it up the court. And she will slow it up, finds Bruno inside. Lost the ball, bounces right to Ong, staking for three, that's good. And a timeout is taken by Clark Summit. So a quick timeout for Clark Summit, and we are back to the action. Luckily, we're playing in, indoors with the impending snowstorm, Winter Storm Grayson, which is coming up the East Coast and expected to drop nearly two feet of snow in the Boston area. And we're probably going to get a lot of snow here in Scranton and elsewhere. But that shot came off. Kara Romaniello just into the game is fouled and will go to the line for two. But if you are in an area where you are going to get a lot of snow, please do not try to drive. I've tried to drive home in a snowstorm in a little front wheel drive Honda Civic and it is not fun. You slide all over the road and I feel like I was gonna end up in a ditch. <laughs> So please make sure you stay home and stay in the warm. So Romaniello goes one of two at the line. Bistrin was, appeared to be fouled. Carolee Pierce, who has just checked in, the 6'1 freshman, number 13. That shot bounced around, but the defenders get it back. 20 to nine the score. A drive by Erdman and the shot is good. And no good. Pierce with the rebound. Coming the other way. Olsen, cross court to Romaniello. And a walk is called and it will go the other way. Tuffy at the top of the key, gives it off to Erdman. Erdman finds Traxler, 
Traxler, the step back shot, no good. Romaniello tips it to Olsen and the Pacers bring it the other way. Romaniello drives. Finds Angst. Out to Bistrin. Bistrin for three, that's long. Rebound bounces around and into the hands of Traxler. Tuffy, free throw line jumper is good. Angst in the corner, no good. We are under 10 seconds to play here in the first quarter. Five seconds, Erdman shot no good. Bistrin will take a half court heave and it is short. And that will do it for the first quarter. So it was a solid first half played for both teams. The Pacers enjoy a seven point lead at the moment. They are led by Gab Giordano with about eight, with eight points right now. Natasha Hessling has four, and Lisa Staken hit a three earlier in the game. But I will say the Pacers offense looks like they are hitting on all cylinders right now. Let's see if I can pull up the field goal percentage. They're shooting 53% from the field, which is a very solid number. Clark Summit only 36% with only five shots made. And I'll tell you what, Clark Summit is 0-11, but the team doesn't look that bad. I'll tell you what, Erdman is a very solid player. She's got six points right now. Thank you, Jay. She's got six points right now. Hannah Scarborough has put up some quality minutes. She's got two points and a block. Randy Traxler has an assist, but three turnovers and three points. She has played relatively well. She's one of the players we featured in the Open, and she is the team's second leading scorer with about 18.3 points per game. So we are just about set to return to the action as the Pacers are getting ready to take it out. And we are underway in the second quarter. The Pacers starting five is out there. Olsen shot no good, gets her own rebound and she's fouled and will head to the line for two. So Olsen who is a 55% free throw shooter will have two at the line. Her first is good. And she goes two of two. Tuffy. Gets it over to Erdman. Erdman for three. That's good. And the deficit is cut to just six. Giordano's pass intended for Hessling is knocked away and stolen by Mansberger. Traxler will bring it up. The true freshman point guard. Pass tipped, but Mansberger got it back. They get it over to, that was Traxler. Tuffy, the three is short. Rebound pulled down by Fernandez Tierney. The Pacers bringing it the other way. Olsen inside was for Hessling, but another turnover. The 
These are the games the Pacers have to win in order to stay in the in contention for a CSAC playoff berth. But they need to limit their turnovers. They have nine turnovers already, uh, six turnovers already, rather. And we're only a minute and 30 seconds into the second quarter. So that's Erdman at the free throw line. She makes her first. Erdman's a 76% free throw shooter. And she goes two of two. Pacers pushing it up the court. Bistrin finds Giordano. Fernandez Tierney in the corner. Olsen finds Giordano. Cross court to Fernandez Tierney. Over to Bistrin. Bistrin drives the Euro pass to Hessling. Shot is good from the elbow. And we are under eight minutes to play here in the second quarter. And the Pacers lead 24-18. Erdman drives, gives it off to Traxler. Traxler shot way long. Fernandez Tierney pushing it up the court. Bistrin in the corner. Finds Hessling inside. The foul and the bucket is good. Great play all around by the Pacers. Great assist. Great lay in and they get the foul. Hessling makes her free throw. Pacers were really looking to rebound because when they played Wheaton in Nashville, they really struggled. Their leading scorer was Gab Giordano. That shot is long and off the foot of Olsen, so it will stay with the defenders. But Gab Giordano was their leading scorer with six points in that game. It's safe to say the Pacers were looking to bounce back in this one, and they have made a statement so far in the first half. Traxler for three, that's good. Giordano pushing it up the court. Odd man rush, Bistrin with the lay-in shot no good. Fernandez Tierney's, looked like she could have been fouled, but no call. Ball went out of bounds and the Pacers will retain it. Katie Nealon will check in along with Lisa Staken. Bistrin, that's a three, that's long. And it is last touched by Clark Summit. And it will stay with the Pacers. Into the corner to Bistrin. Bistrin for three, that's long. Rebound pulled down by Tuffy. Traxler will bring it up. And it will stay with the defenders as it was tipped by the Pacers. Bruno, Riley, and Augs back into the game for the Pacers. Erdman, over to Tuffy, over to Mansberger. That shot is good for three. That was Randy Traxler who got that one to go. Nealon, cross court to Angst. Staken, gives it back to Angst. Staken, a long three, he comes up short. Erdman pulls down the board.
Erdman for three, no good. And a fight for the ball on the floor and it's a jump ball. Traxler with the good head fake. Shot comes off, staking with the board. Pass inside to Onks, backing down. Shot comes up short. Samantha Snow is into the game, the 5'7 senior, number 24, and a timeout will be taken by Clark Summit. So after today, there will be two more telecasts before we come back to school. And we have a full crew again. And I really do appreciate everybody who comes out and helps us out with these games. Those of you that are here, you know I'm talking to you. So I really appreciate everybody being here and helping out with the telecast. And I'm sure all of you at home appreciate being able to watch your kids if you're not able to be here. Watch your kids play. It's really something that we enjoy doing. It's really something that I enjoy doing, and I hope to keep doing it for the next two, year, next three years. But after tonight, the Pacers will travel to Rosemont College on Saturday afternoon, and they come back home on Tuesday night for a doubleheader against Keystone. The men follow at 8 o'clock and then the final home game of break they play Cedar Crest I believe that's on Saturday afternoon I'm sorry strike that Thursday night Erdman steps through is fouled she will go to the line First free throw is good from Erdman. Shot no good, rebound pulled down by the defenders. Tuffy got that one. Traxler gets it out to Tuffy. Erdman in the corner. Traxler. That shot comes off, rebound by Snow. Erdman drives, kicks it out to Tuffy. Tuffy gives it back to Traxler. Five to shoot. Erdman gives it to Traxler. That three is long. It's a shot clock violation and a turnover. Pacers trying to get everybody involved today. As they had another big group substitution. Pass inside to Olsen. She'll be fouled. So Giordano, Hessling, Olsen, and Bistrin all back in for the Pacers. Staken stays out there. Fouls on Samantha Snow. That's her first. Olsen gets her first to go. Olsen goes two of two. Defense! 
Traxler controls it at the top. Steps back, takes a free throw line jumper, no good. Bistrin with the rebound. Heading the other way, full court pass to Olsen, who gets the basket. A great look from Bistrin, who gets the assist. And another timeout taken by the defenders. The Pacers now lead by 6, 31-25. It seems as though Clark Summit has had an answer for most of the Pacers' offense, but the Pacers do still lead by six as they got out to that early lead. Pacers at one point led by 11 points, and they have led for the entire game. Their largest lead came at the 213 mark in the first. Pass inside, Erdman backing down. Doesn't get the friendly roll. Giordano finds Bistrin in the corner. Bistrin, the pass to Hessling. Shot no good, Hessling missed the layup. And the defenders will bring it the other way as Traxler will bring it up the floor. We're just over three minutes to play in the first half. 31-25 the score. Traxler gets a screen from Erdman. Gives it over to Erdman. In the corner, the shot for three from Tuffy is no good. And it goes out of bounds. And the Pacers will get it back. Bistrin, that's a three, gets the friendly roll. And Erica Bistrin finally gets on the board, though she does have four assists in this one. Tracks the shot long, rebound pulled down by Hessling. Olsen bringing it up the floor, finds Staken. Staken drives. Gives it inside to Hessling. Olsen has it now. She drives in and out of the hands of Hessling. And last touch by a Clark Summit defender. So the Pacers will get it back. No pun intended there. Giordano's three was short. Rebound pulled down. And Traxler will bring it up the floor. Tuffy gets it over to Traxler. Pass inside. Last touch by the defenders. And the Pacers will get it back. A minute 38 to play in the first half. Giordano brings it up. Defenders in a 2-3 zone set. And a walk is called on Giordano and it will head the other way. Another turnover for the Pacers. That's seven now. Three alone for Gab Giordano. Erdman gives it off to Traxler. She gets a screen from Scarborough. Erdman drives, kicks it out to Traxler. Traxler for three, that's long. Bounces around and it will stay with Clark Summit. Erdman gets it up to Tuffy. Into the corner, Traxler, looked like that was a long two. Rebound, that was by Scarborough and a block by Giordano. The shot for three is no good, the rebound bounces around and Staking comes up with it. And it's last touched by Clark Summit 
Stakin was looking for Hessling, but the pass was a little short, and it was tipped out of bounds by Clark Summit. But Pacers do get it back. Inside to Olsen, and the floater is good. Mansberger with it, gets it over to Tuffy. Tuffy gets a screen from Erdman. Pass inside to Traxler. That shot no good for Mansberger. And Giordano will be fouled. Ten and a half seconds remaining in the first half and the Pacers will take a timeout to set up on inbounds play with the Pacers leading by 11. So the Pacers have never trailed in this one. This is matched, this has matched their largest lead of the game. Get it into Giordano with under 10 seconds to play in the first half. Olsen, five seconds. Bistrin in the corner to beat the buzzer. No good. And that's going to do it for the first half. So that concludes the first half. When we come back, we will have our first half recap and the second half of basketball right here at the Insulaco Arena. So don't go anywhere. You are watching Marywood Pacers basketball right here on TV Marywood.
and welcome back to the Insulaco Arena for the start of the second half. Let us quickly take a look at the first half stats. And we'll start on the Pacers side. They do lead 36-25. They're shooting 43% from the field. They're 13 of 30 shooting. 31% from beyond the arc. 86% at the line as a team. 13 assists, a very uh, pass-friendly first half for the Pacers. 24 rebounds to go against Clark Summits, 20. Only two steals, a block, and seven turnovers. As for Clark Summit, it's been a very poor effort so far shooting the ball. They're only shooting 24%. 25% from beyond the arc, which it doesn't look like it's a high number, but it is a relatively high number. 25% is solid from beyond the arc. Five of seven from the free throw line for 71%. Six assists, 20 rebounds, four steals, two blocks, and seven turnovers. So we are set to go for the second half as the Pacers will start the second half with the basketball. And here we go. So the Pacers now in the home white will move left to right on your screen. And Clark Summit in the road blue moves right to left. So let's set the floor. The Pacers have their starting five. They do not have the starting five out there, excuse me. It is as the rebound is pulled down by Tuffy. Katie Nealon is out there with Alyssa Olsen, Natasha Hessling, Gab Giordano, and rounded out by Lisa Staken. And it does appear that Clark Summit has four of their starters in the lone non-starter. That is Danny Mansberger. That shot is no good. Rebound pulled down by Hessling. Shot for three by Neal and no good. Another rebound by Hessling. Olsen gets it to Staken in the corner. She goes baseline and it's out of bounds and it will go the other way. Another turnover. Tuffy for three, no good. Goes out of bounds. Pass up to Giordano. Staken will control it at the top of the key. Hessling, cross court pass to Nealon. Nealon finds Staken. Into the corner to Olsen. Olsen steps through a defender. Shot no good. Rebound pulled down by Erdman. Five rebounds and 12 points for Tori Erdman. Pacers do not have anybody in double figures, but they have three players with at least eight points. Natasha Hessling has nine, and Alyssa Olsen and Gab Giordano each have eight. Pass inside, shot no good. Rebound pulled down by Staken. Olsen gets it over to Nealon. Nealon shot no good. Hessling gets the board. We have a foul on the floor. And it's going to be on Clark Summit. That's on Duffy. On Tuffy, rather. Staken for three, that's good. Lisa Staken with six points. And the Pacers have stretched their lead to 14. It's their largest lead of the night. Looks like the Pacers in the second half have come out in a 2-3 zone. They seem to do that a lot as his pass is stolen away by Nealon. Giordano finds Olsen. Pass outside for Staken. The three was long. Traxler will bring it up. 
Tuffy back to Traxler. Back to Tuffy. Traxler for three, that's good. She answers with a three of her own. A possession after the Pacers knocked one down. Staking a long three is good, and she answers with a three of her own. Tuffy, three goes long. And Mansberger tried to save it, but she couldn't. And an entirely new group for the Pacers. It's Bistrin, Fernandez, Tierney. As we have a timeout. It's Bistrin, Fernandez, Tierney, Bruno, Riley, and Angst. So the timeout was taken by Clark Summit. It was a 30 second timeout. Fernandez Tierney will bring it up the court for the Pacers. She gets a screen from Riley. She almost lost the ball. She gets it over to Bistrin. Drive by Onks. She's doubled. Bistrin's shot is blocked. She gets it back. And now she's fouled. Bistrin knocks down her first free throw. She is a 74% free throw shooter. And she goes two of two. And Katie Swan will check in. Four o'clock summit. And pass goes out of bounds. Last touch by Fernandez Tierney, so Clark Summit will keep it. Get it into Traxler. Gets a screen from Erdman. Traxler for three, that's no good. An offensive rebound for Tuffy, that shot is no good. Ball's on the floor, headed the other way is Bistrin. She finds Angst, Angst for three, that's good. Five assists for Erica Bistrin in this one. She had 12 all year coming into the game and now she's got five. So Angst gets on the board. The Pacers extend their lead to 19. Tuffy's shot, no good. Bruno, the pass for her was errant. And it will go out of bounds. So the Pacers have outscored Clark Summit 11 to three here in the third quarter. 
A little over halfway through the third quarter, and now their lead is 19. The drive and the kick out to the corner. Shot no good from Mansberger. Bistrin, a long pass for Riley and the bucket. How about Erica Bistrin finding the open man today? She's got six assists along with nine points. Five points, I should say. Erdman was screened on the play. She looked like she was a little shaken up, but she's got it back. No stoppage of play. Stolen away by Augst. She's bringing it the other way. Shot no good. Bistrin with the rebound and the putback. Scarborough with it, gets it back to Erdman. Erdman drives, had it and lost it. Gets it over to Traxler, Traxler, shot no good. Shot to beat the shot clock is good. Pass up the court, Augs comes up with it. Shot no good, rebound pulled down by Tuffy. And the defenders will bring it the other way. Traxler will bring it up. Erdman and Traxler, the lone players in double figures in this one, each with 12 points respectively. And a foul is called on Fernandez Tierney. And another full group substitution. It's gonna be Romaniello, Olsen, Nealon, Giordano and Pierce. And I think Pierce just picked up a foul. Yes, she did. First free throw from Erdman is no good. A 76% free throw shooter is Erdman. And she goes one of two. Giordano cross court pass to Olsen. Finds Nealon. Back to Giordano, Giordano for three, no good. Ball bounces around and Erdman ends up on the floor. And Traxler will bring it up for the defenders. Pass inside to Erdman, and she will be fouled and take more free throws. Katie Nealon is guilty of the foul. Erdman's first free throw is good. And it's good, gets the friendly roll. Romaniello with it, guarded by Traxler. Defender's still in a 2-3 zone. Romaniello gets it over to Giordano, inside to Olsen. The turnaround floater no good, rebound pulled down by Scarborough. And Traxler will bring it up the court. Pacers League currently sits at 18. Erdman will be fouled again. Pacers largest lead was 23. That was only two minutes ago. Erdman's first free throw is good. And 
she goes two of two. Pierce misses. A scrum for the ball. Traxler had it, lost it, got it back. She gets a screen from Erdman. Erdman drives, kicks it out to Scarborough. Back out to Erdman, finds Tuffy. The circus shot is no good. We're under a minute to play. 40 seconds to be exact. Giordano had her pocket picked by Traxler. Coming the other way. They blow the layup, Nealon bringing it up the court. It's a three on one. And they couldn't keep it as Nealon's knee went out of bounds. That will go the other way. The Pacers had a good chance to get a, an easy fast break bucket there. But a little bit of an errant pass from Giordano back to Nealon and it goes the other way. Foul is called on Nealon, that's her third. First free throw is good by Traxler. She's a 76% free throw shooter. Shot no good. Three seconds, Giordano to beat the buzzer, no good. And that's the end of the third quarter. So at the end of three, the Pacers lead by 15, 51-36, your score. Pacers were ahead by four in that quarter. You get a look inside the Pacers huddle there. Coach Tara Machaco is in her 14th season as Pacers head coach. She's done a great job in her 14 years. She coached her team to the CSAC semifinals last year. They were the top seed the last two years. And they fell at home in the semifinals in each of the last two years. set to go here in the fourth quarter. 51-36 the score, and Clark Summit will start the fourth quarter with the basketball. Traxler gets it over to Erdman. Gives it off to Tuffy. Tuffy gets it back. Over to Traxler, 10 to shoot. Over to Mansberger. Tuffy in the corner gets a screen from Scarborough. Two to shoot, Erdman, the turnaround floater, gets the friendly roll, shot is good. Bistrin finds Giordano. And the pass is errant and it will go out of bounds. Right in front of the scorer's table. The shot for three is no good. Rebound pulled down by Mansberger. 
Erdman drives on Olsen. Stripped away by Hessling. Hessling bringing it up the court. Olsen with it. Out to Hessling. That's a long two. Shot no good. Rebound pulled down by Scarborough. Mansberger for three, that's long. Giordano pulls down the board. She was trying to direct traffic there, gets it off to Staken, shot no good, rebound pulled down by Erdman. Nineteen points for Tori Erdman in this one. Traxler, shot no good, rebound pulled down by Staken. Bistrin to Staken. Kick out to Hessling, into the corner. Pass was tipped, but Bistrin had it, and a block is called. That's gonna be on Scarborough. That's her fourth. We get it into Staken. Bistrin in the corner for three. That's good. And Erica Bistrin is the first pacer in double figures. As she is on the board. Foul on Bistrin there. Erdman from the free throw line, no good. And it's gotten back by Snow. Hessling. Bistrin in the corner for three, that's short. Rebound pulled down by Traxler. Erdman drives, gets a screen from Snow and she has 21. A nice lay-in from Erdman. And the lead is 14. Giordano over to Hessling in the corner. She drives, finds Olsen. Olsen for three, that's good. What an incredible display of passing for the Pacers in this one. As a team, they have 19 assists. Er, uh, Traxler missed that one. Inside to Giordano, over to Staken. Staken for three, that's long. Rebound by Hessling. That's seven boards for Hessling. Giordano's in the corner, they leave her wide open and she makes a pay with the three. Gab Giordano is one of those players that you cannot leave open from beyond the arc. She will shoot it, and more times than not, she will make it. Shot is good for two, that was Erdman. She's got 23, that's a game high. Bistrin will be fouled, and head to the charity stripe. Quick reminder, immediately following this game at 8 o'clock, we will have the men's game against Clark Summit right here on TVM. So be sure to stay tuned for that. So Bistrin will head to the line for two. She's a 74% free throw shooter this year as she makes her first. Staken, Olsen, and Hessling will take a seat. 
Angst, Bruno, and Fernandez Tierney into the game. And Bistrin leaves that one short. Erdman came up with that rebound. Shot for three is good by Mansberger. Shot is blocked there by Erdman. Another impressive half court pass, that time by Fernandez Tierney. They got it up to Bistrin. But her shot was blocked. Bistrin in the corner for three, that's no good. Bruno collects the board. Shot no good. Giordano comes down with the offensive rebound. Pass cross court for Bistrin. She drives the floater, no good. Rebound pulled down by Tuffy. Clark Summit will bring it up the floor. Mansberger is called for the walk. And it will head the other way back to the Pacers as Kate Riley will check in. And Erica Bistrin will take a seat. Giordano will bring it up with the 16 point lead for the Pacers with about four and a half minutes left to play. Riley for three, that's no good. Rebound pulled down by Traxler. She drives. And an offensive foul, Fernandez Tierney takes the charge. Great job getting in position to take the charge and the Pacers will get the ball back. Giordano passes it to Angst. Angst in the corner for three, that's good. Araya Angst with six points. She's two of three from three point land. And in she gets the steal coming the other way. She finds Giordano and she's tripped up. Foul's on the floor so the Pacers will retain it. That was on Traxler. That's her fourth. And a timeout will be taken by Clark Summit head coach Lori Huckabee in her second season as the Defenders head coach. So with just under four minutes to play and a 19 point lead for the Pacers. Let's take a look back at what we've seen in this game. We've seen the Pacers take 29 three pointers. They've made 11 of them for a 38% three point percentage. They're only shooting 37% from the field but they've chucked up 60 shots. seems like their offense today has been chuck up shots and hope they go in and they're just making more than Clark Summit has and it seems like that's been the the tactic for both teams but so far the Pacers have a 19 point lead they've made eight more shots from the floor Clark Summit shooting 25 percent from the floor 23 percent from beyond the arc For a second there, I only saw four Clark Summit players. But Traxler gets back up the court. Giordano wide open in the corner for three, she misses. Rebound pulled down by Scarborough. Twelve to shoot. Pass out to Tuffy. 
Step back jumper, no good. Rebound pulled down by Riley and she is fouled. And she will be shooting free throws as the Pacers are in the bonus. The Pacers have not trailed in this one. They have led from wire to wire. Riley misses her first free throw. Giordano will take a seat. Presumably her night is done. And a very productive night for Gab Giordano. As if she is out of the game for good, she finishes with 11 points, five rebounds and three assists. So Riley went 0 of 2. Traxler gets a screen from Erdman. The drive, shot no good. Rebound pulled down by Riley. Pass stolen away by Traxler. And errant pass by Fernandez Tierney. And it is off Fernandez Tierney and will stay with the defenders. Mansberger with it. Get it inside to Erdman. She steps through a defender and the shot is no good. She winds up with the ball once again. Shot for three, no good by Traxler. Riley bringing it up the floor. Romaniello with it. Finds Onks, but the pass was stolen away. Erdman got the steal. Erdman has nine rebounds. She needs one more for a double-double. And she's fouled again. With Coach Machaco to my left, I'm able to hear some of the things she tells her team and she's a little frustrated that they fouled there. But at this point, it's only gonna be a moot point in the box score as she makes her first free throw. And that one's good. So 25 points for Tori Erdman. Two minutes to play for her to get one rebound for a double-double. Shot for three from Fernandez Tierney, in and out. Rebound pulled down by Scarborough. That's eight rebounds for her. Traxler guarded by Fernandez Tierney. Tuffy with it. They call the foul on Romaniello. Romaniello and uh, Erdman were going at it there. Ultimately, the foul was called on Romaniello. That shot is no good by Traxler. Fernandez Tierney going up the court. Foul and the bucket. A great play by Fernandez Tierney to get the long rebound, go coast to coast, and get the bucket to go and the foul. And she is on the board, and we'll have one more at the line. She's a 53% free throw shooter, kind of struggled from the line this year. And she makes that one. A minute 20 to play. 67-47 the score in favor of the Pacers. Tuffy. Erdman, shot no good. Bruno with the board.
Riley in the corner for three, no good. Rebound pulled down by Augston, the Pacers can reset. They can bring the game clock down to about 20 seconds. Inside to Riley. Shot is good by Kate Riley. Twenty-five seconds to play. Shot is good from Traxler to make it a twenty-point game. And with the shot clock off, the Pacers can just run the clock out. Five seconds left. Romaniello tries to get on the board, and it is. I guess it was blocked because it's going to stay with the Pacers and all they need to do is inbound it and that will do it. Romaniello takes a three in and out. Fernandez Cheney will get credit for the rebound and that will do it. So the Pacers finish the game shooting 36% from the field. 33% from beyond the arc, 11 of 33 from beyond the arc. They led from wire to wire, a tremendous performance and a major statement made by the Pacers coming back from their big loss against Wheaton College as they get the win over Clark Summit, 69-49. Well, that's gonna do it for our coverage of the women's game. Be sure to tune into the men's game which will be coming up in about, let's see what time it is. It's about 7.30, so it'll be coming your way in about a half hour. So stay tuned for that. So that's a, that will do it for our coverage of the women's game. And the men's game is coming up at 8 o'clock right here on TV Marywood.
We are at the Interlaco Arena for the second half of a doubleheader between with the men and women. Tonight, the Pacers men take on the men from Clark Summit University. Hi, once again, everyone. I'm Brendan Murphy. Glad to be with you tonight. The Pacers men are coming off a big win over Mount St. Mary's University in their last game of 2017, and they look to continue their hot stretch into the new year. They are 1-2 in conference. They're with losses to Newman and Gwyneth Mercy, but they're going to look to get off the schneid in conference and pick up a win in this one. So let's take a look at who's in the spotlight, and we're going to start with Jack DeGroote, who had himself a fabulous game against Mount St. Mary's. He scored 20 points, along with three rebounds, was the team's leading scorer in that one. And James Curley had 17 in the game, along with six rebounds. On the other side for Mount St. Mary's, we start with John McCloskey, the team's second leading scorer, averaging just shy of 14 points a game and six and a half rebounds a game. And Preston Huckabee averages about 10 points a game and three and a half assists per game. So the Pacers are gonna look to stop those two along with the rest of the Clark Summit team. The Pacers are looking to open 2018 with a win. So when we come back, we will have the starting lineups and the opening tap right here on TVM. athletes, coaches, and spectators. We request your cooperation by supporting the participants and officials in a positive manner. Profanity, racial, or sexist comments. And welcome back to the Insulaco Arena as we are just announcing the starting lineups. So we are going to start with Clark Summit and they're led by John McCloskey, the 6'4 sophomore guard, number 24, 21, pardon. Uh, Reed Plants, the 6'4 sophomore, number 25. Will Smoot, the 6'3 freshman, number 12. Preston Huckabee, the 5'11 freshman, number 11. And Steven Berger, the 5'9 uh, junior, number five. And on the other side for your Marywood Pacers, Donovan Catchings, the 5'9 freshman, gets the start, number two. Tip Swartz, the 6'5 junior, number three. Kendall Farrell, the 6'4 senior, number 12. James Curley, the 6'2", senior number 32. 
and Jeremy Ringland, the 6'8", junior, number 34. One player for Clark Summit you may have to look out for, and you will see him at some point. It's gonna be Donald Miller, the 6'7", sophomore, the big-bodied center, did a number on Ringland last year in their matchup. And we'll have to see what transpires in that matchup this year. So the teams are just about set to go. So the Pacers come into this one at six and three. One and two in conference. And they won their last game of 2017, defeating Mount St. Mary's University, 72-65. They have won three of four. Their lone loss coming to number nine, Lycoming College. And the Pacers win the tip as Catchings will control it. They were in that Lycoming game for a while. They only lost it 82-69. So they played well against the number nine team in the country. So the Pacers in the home gray will move right to left on your screen. The defenders in the road black move left to right. Schwartz drives. The lay-in is good. Smoot was defending. And Swartz gets the Pacers on the board. Good, good switch now, Charles. 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 Five to shoot, Smoot with it. The drive on Ringland, shot no good. And the ball bounces around a little bit and will stay with the defenders. They pass it into Smoot. Berger with it now. Drives on Curly. Kicks it out to Plants. Pass inside to Plants. He misses. Swartz with the rebound. A charge is called. It looks like it's on Farrell. A great play to take the charge. And Clark Summit will bring it the other way. Hands, pressure down. Pass is, the ball's on the floor. And Smoot comes out with it. The pass inside to Plants and the lane is good. Curly, over to Farrell. Inside to Ringland, he misses. Rebound pulled down by Huckabee. Huckabee, a long three, no good. Huckabee is a Decent three-point shooter, shooting 27% for the year. Curley's three comes off, and a foul on Farrell. It's already his second. We're not even three minutes into the game. But I was watching Huckabee shoot around in the pregame, and he knocked down quite a few deep threes, some even from the NCAA mark. And that's a long, long shot. That shot for three is good by Berger, and Clark Summit has a three-point lead.
Ringland gives it off to Schwartz. Schwartz, off balance, shot, no good. They get Farrell in the air, does McCloskey. The drive, kick back out to McCloskey over to Smoot. Huckabee with it now. Patrolling the floor. Five shoot. Ball bounces around. And a foul is called on Farrell. That's three, and he will likely take a seat for quite a while. First free throw, no good. Plants a 69% free throw shooter. And the second is good. So he goes one of two and it is 6-2 in favor of the defenders. Jack DeGroote is checked in. The six foot freshman, number 21. Yeah, job, Foul is called. That's on Plants. Good job by Ringland to draw that foul. Yeah. Yeah. Curly. Shot from the elbow, no good. Rebound pulled down by Huckabee. The drive, kick out to Huckabee. Guarded by Catchings. Pass over to McCloskey. Inside to Donald Miller and here's the matchup we've been waiting for. And the floater is good by Smoot. Miller is only an inch shorter than Ringland. And the circus shot by DeGroote is no good, but the foul is called. Foul on McCloskey, that's his first. So DeGroote will shoot free throws. He's only a 63% free throw shooter. And he makes his first. And DeGroote goes two of two. And that shot is good. That was Donald Miller on Jeremy Ringland. Ringland has it on Miller. Ball knocked away and it will go to the defenders. 10 for Clark Summit. Clark Summit is a one and nine team. Has not won a game in conference yet this year. Shot for three, no good. Their lone college, their lone win came against their, the College of St. Elizabeth in their first game of the year. They won that game 80 to 79. And here is Marywood's favorite redhead, Joey Monahan, into the game. The 6'4 freshman, number 22. Schwartz out to Curley. Curley for three, that's good. Oh, 
They get it up the court. Catchings picks his pocket, but they get it right back to Berger as he comes up with it. Huckabee for three, no good. Curley with the rebound. Pacers have numbers coming up the court. Schwartz got his man in the air, and the bank is open, and the bank shot is good. Pass tipped into the hands of Catchings. The group with the lay-in. And the Pacers have stormed back and taken their first lead of the night. Berger, they get it over to Smoot. Huckabee with it. The floater no good. Berger with the board. Long three from McCloskey, shot no good. Curley wide open for three, that is good. James Curley hits the three. The Pacers lead by four, and Clark Summit all of a sudden has to take a timeout. The Pacers have stormed back, have gone on a 10-0 run. It's a 10-point swing in a matter of two minutes. Two minutes and 15 seconds to be exact. Steven Marvin is into the game, the 5'6", sophomore, number four. Along with Duke Go, a 6'1", sophomore, number 31. That free throw line jumper is good by Smoot. Catchings finds Monahan. Monahan gives a screen for catching. He's a nice little floater after the nice little spin move. And it's last touch by Miller. And the Pacers will keep it. Monahan gets it over to Adam Busada just into the game, and he knocks down a three. Usada, the 6'4", freshman number 24, is into the game as he knocks down the three. Guo is fouled. Marvin will handle it at the top. They get it over to Smoot. Miller. Back over to Marvin. Pass back up to Go. Was looking for Miller and catching stepped out of bounds. Get it into Miller, who finds Smoot. Smoot to beat the shot clock, no good. Monahan with the rebound. Catchings bringing it up the floor. Gets a screen from Monahan. Pass over to Busada. Busada drives, steps through a man, and the lay-in is good. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, Cruz. Come on, Cruz. Drop, drop. Marvin controls it. Up. 
Huckabee with it. Monahan with the steal. Finds Curley, and he will be fouled and head to the line for two. Curley makes his first. Curley is an 85% free throw shooter. And he goes two of two. And Tom DiFilippo will check in for Curley. The 6'2 sophomore number one. Marvin at the top of the key. Huckabee has it. Get it over to Marvin. Marvin, an awkward shot, no good. Ball bounces around, it will go back to the Pacers. And Tone Cockrell will come into the game for the Pacers, the 5'9 freshman, number 13. A nice little pass to DeGroote from Cockrell. And the lay-in was good. The Pacers lead by 11. It's their largest lead of the night. Cross corner. Shot for three is good by McCloskey. DeGroot gets a screen from DiFilippo, Cockrell does. Usada drives, steps through, has his pocket picked. McCloskey will bring it the other way. He lost his dribble, so he'll bring it up, gives it to Huckabee. Huckabee gives it back to McCloskey, who goes over to Marvin. Gives it off to Huckabee. McCloskey controlling it. He drives. And a foul is called. And a charge is taken. I believe that was Monahan who took the charge. I was kind of blocked by the referee, but a great play. And the Pacers get it back. We are under 10 minutes to play in the first half. Cockrell finds the group, and I believe we're going to have an illegal screen. Musada will take a seat. Schwartz will come back in. Smoot with it, gets it over to Marvin. Marvin finds Huckabee in the corner, Marvin gets it back. Shot is good from Plants. The Fredericksburg, Virginia native. Gets the bucket and the lead has shrunk to six. Monahan guarded by Miller. Cockrell drives, gets it out to Schwartz. Schwartz for three, that's good. 
And Tip Schwartz has seven. Long pass for Smoot. Huckabee, the long three, comes up short. Rebound pulled down by Monahan. Cockrell drives. DeFilippo is fouled. By Smoot. So DeFilippo will take it out. Cockrell controls it at the top of the key. to get it over to DeGroot. DeGroot for three. No good, rebound pulled down by Smoot. Defenders bring it the other way. Walk will be called on Smoot. See some familiar faces walking around. You see, I see Dr. Mary Jo Gunning is running around somewhere. And Sister Mary Persico, the president of Marywood, has made an appearance. Came to enjoy the game. Schwartz finds Curley for three. Three three-pointers for James Curley. He's got 11 points. And the Pacers' lead is swelled back to 12. And a travel is called. This is the largest lead of the night for the Pacers. Cock roll into Ringland, who's just back in. Over to Curley, 10 to shoot. Cross court to DeGroot. Into Schwartz. Schwartz from the elbow. In and out. DeGroot with the putback. And he's fouled on the shot. First free throw from DeGroote is good. 3 once again, a 63% free throw shooter. Now 15 of 22 on the year. And he's good again. Pacers went for the double team trap. That shot's no good. Plants with the rebound and the, and the bucket is good. Cockroll lost it. Ball picked up by Berger. Heading the other way, finds Marvin, who lost it. Went out of bounds, and the Pacers get it back. DeGroote over to Schwartz. Gets it over to Cockerell. Up to Ringland. Schwartz has it, gets a screen from Ringland. Five to shoot. Schwartz with the circus shot and he's fouled. 
Foul is on McCloskey. Schwartz's first free throw is good. Schwartz a 90% free throw shooter this year. If you remember his game against Gwyneth Mercy, he scored 32 points and half of his points came at the free throw line. He was 16 of 16 from the line in that one. And a foul will be called on Curley. But Schwartz goes two of two. And the lead is back to 14. Tied for the largest lead of the night. Pass over to Huckabee. Huckabee's shot over Curley is good. Curley with good defense with a hand in his face. But Huckabee made the shot. Schwartz, Curley, another three is good. Have a night, James Curley. 14 points, four three-pointers. And the ball's on the floor. And they come back. It will go back to the defenders. Great hustle there from Schwartz to go after the ball, but he ran into the scorer's table. Tipped. Knocked out of bounds. So they will have a second to get the ball over half court. So they are behind half court. Just barely, but they are behind half court. And they keep it in bounds, Berger does. He's double teamed. Pass over and a block by Ringland on Plants. Ringland, if you remember, was 13th in the nation in blocks last year and set a school record in that same category with, I believe, 63 blocks. That foul will be on Guo. And it was 63 blocks. He led the way in the conference. And he was 13th in the nation. Schwartz finds catchings in the corner. He drives, finds Ringland. Ringland, the shot is good, but they call a charge. Coach Mastriani very upset with the call, and rightly so. Didn't look like a charge at all. It looked like the defender stepped up and didn't set his feet. And the shot the other way, no good. Rebound pulled down by Curley. Cockrell over to Schwartz. Schwartz wide open for three, no good. Curl, uh, Ringland with the, ring bound, with the rebound. Gets it out to Catchings. They will reset into Curley, no good. But he passes it over to Ringland, also no good. Rebound pulled down by Huckabee. So two blown layups by the Pacers in that possession. They had chances but couldn't get it. Catchings up to Cockrell. Cockrell finds Curley. Up to Schwartz, finds catchings, catchings for three, no good. The bank was closed on that one as catchings could not get that one to fall. Shot over Schwartz is good by Berger. Nice shot. Release. 
Catchings with the Euro and he's fouled. And he will go to the line for two. Catchings makes the first. And if you see in the, kind of the top right corner of your screen, looks like somebody walked in with Wendy's for the Clark Summit women's team. Something to munch on as they watch the men play before they head back home. The shot by Marvin is no good. Rebound pulled down by Schwartz. Ringland with the jumper, it's good. Huckabee. The shot to beat the shot clock, no good. We are under a minute to play. Curly shot, no good. And a nice little Euro step by Berger. Right around Ringland. Curly gets it over to Schwartz and a hand check. And it's going to be two free throws for Schwartz. First one is good. DeGroote and Monahan will check in. Curley and Ringland will head to the bench with 32 and a half seconds to play in the first half. And Swartz goes two of two. And Swartz is into double figures with 11 points. Marvin controlling it. Shot clock and game clock separated by about a second and a half. So they can pretty much bring it down to the very end. Foul is called on Monahan as Huckabee will shoot two. could be a 71% free throw shooter and makes his first. And Huckabee goes two of two. Five seconds left, Catchings will be fouled and will have two free throws before the end of the half. And Catchings makes his first. And Catchings misses, ball bounces around, and they will not get a shot off before the end of the first half. So that will do it for the first half. When we come back, we will have a recap of the first half. 
right here on TVM. Don't go anywhere.
And welcome back for our coverage of the second half. Let's very quickly go through our first half stats. And we'll start on the side for the Pacers. They lead 42-27. Looks like I messed. All right, that's all right. It says 25 on there. No big deal. But that's actually on me. I make the graphics, so that's my fault. But we're looking. The Pacers are shooting 50% on it. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Director Kim. Our Pacers are shooting 50% from both the field and the three-point line, 86% from the free throw line, 16 uh, assists. You know, that number is actually wrong, too. I, I didn't do a good job in that halftime, but that's okay. The Pacers have 10 assists to the defenders nine. The defenders are shooting 41% from the field and 20% from beyond the arc, but let's get over that. Let's move into the second half of action. Looks like both teams have their start, respective starting fives out there. I do apologize for the mishap on the graphics. I I guess I didn't see the assists or the points for Clark Summit. I guess I wanted to give the Pacers a bigger lead. They get it over to Huckabee. Back to McCloskey. Huckabee got catchings in the air and he gets the bucket. So Clark Summit comes out of the gate and gets a bucket. And Schwartz drives and gets the bucket to go. McCloskey guarded by Catchings. Rich, rich, rich. And it comes in and out of the hands of Huckabee. Smoot. Kicks it out to Berger. Berger for three, that's short. Rebound pulled down by Schwartz. Pacers push it up the court, and the alley-oop was no good. Boy, that would have been pretty. Berger drives on foul. Foul with the steal. Coming the other way, they may try it again. Schwartz with the alley-oop layup is good. I'll tell you one thing, NBA players make alley-oops, make, they make them look routine. They are difficult. And I'll tell you what, Ringland just missed that one. He just didn't get the handle on it. They get it out to Catchings. He drives and makes the land. And a timeout is taken by Clark Summit. Now, if you are a fan of the NBA, you might remember the Lob City teams that the Clippers had revol uh, revolving around Chris Paul to Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan. They made it look easy. Chris Paul was a great alley-oop passer. He still is now that he's on the Rockets. If they would have made that, I know you're not supposed to get excited. I'm supposed to stay unbiased. But I would have gotten excited. That would have been an incredible play. I don't care who does it. If it was a player from Immaculata that did it against the Pacers, I'd still go nuts. It's an alley-oop. It doesn't happen often in college. That would have been a tremendous play. But the Pacers lead by 19. This is their largest lead of the night. James Curley leads the way for the Pacers with 14 points. He's the fourth leading scorer for the Pacers, averaging about eight points a game. So this performance will raise his season scoring average. Let's go, boys. Active, active. Let's go. Let's go. 
Marvin gets it over to Huckabee. Cross court pass to McCloskey. He drives blocked by Ringland. Foul pulls down the board. Pacers headed the other way. They get it up to Schwartz. Curley for three, no good. Ball bounces around. Catchings comes up with it. Farrell, the turnaround jumper is good. Nice turnaround layup for Kendall Farrell. Back in the action after having three fouls very early in the first half. And a foul will be called there on Catchings. Farrell picked up a foul. About, picked up three fouls in about a minute and a half into the game. And he sat for the entire rest of the first half. But now he's back in. Huckabee drives. Another block by Ringland. It is not a block, and it's a foul. Saw the look on Ringland's face there, if you could see it. He looks at the referee, and he's like, what? I don't. I didn't think that was a foul, but that's three on Ringland. And Plants makes his first. Plants misses, Swartz with the board. Catchings gets it over to Farrell. Catchings drives, finds Curley. Curley with the bucket, he's got 16. Glow the shot, no good. Farrell with the board. Schwartz, the step back jumper is good. A nice little fade away from Tip Schwartz. He's got 13. Huckabee drives on Ringland, went straight up. No foul called, shot was no good. Farrell bringing it up the court. Schwartz with it, inside to Ringland. Ringland with the nice little reverse layup. And a timeout is called by the defenders. The Pacers now lead by 26 points. So Tip Swartz has 17. My page actually had to refresh as when I go back into the control room to do the stats, I lose my Wi-Fi connection. So Swartz has 17 and Curley has 16. The Pacers lead by 26 points. That is their largest lead of the, after, of the evening. And they have led since the 1349 mark of the first half. They've led since then. Clark Summit led by six at one point and it has been all Pacers ever since. The Pacers have outscored Clark Summit 52 to 20 over that time frame since the 1532 mark of the first half. And the Pacers put on the trap. Knocked away. Huckabee comes out of the pile with it. Shot for three, no good. Bounces around, Huckabee comes up with it. And he gets the lay in. Come on, 
Farrell. Schwartz with it now at the top of the key. Finds Monahan. Monahan, the shot is no good. Rebound pulled down by McCloskey. Marvin bringing it up. McCloskey finds his man and it's stolen away. Schwartz up to DeGroote. And the lane is good. And DeGroote is in double figures with 10. Marvin for three, that's long, into the hands of Tip Swartz. Tone Cockrell is back into the game and he will bring the ball up. And he's fouled by Marvin. Cockrell over to Farrell. Farrell for three, that's no good. And Miller pulls down the rebound. He's back into the game. McCloskey. Shot no good. Cockrell bringing it up. DeGroote with the lay-in. Twenty-eight point lead for the Pacers. They have been in control of this game. Stolen away by Cockrell, coming the other way, and he blows the layup, but DeGroote gets the board. So he gets the bucket. Fourteen points for Jack DeGroote off the bench. Pacers lead by 30, stolen away by Schwartz. Cockrell to DeGroote. Schwartz, drive on Miller. Shot no good, but he is fouled. And Swartz makes his first. Five of five from the charity stripe today. <laughs> and the Pacers have doubled up Clark Summit. It is 64-32. And Tommy Filippo will check in. Plants. Isaac Sidman is just into the game for Clark Summit, the 5'7 freshman, number 15. Adam Busada is also back into the game for the Pacers. Filippo drives. Kicks it out to DeGroote. And he misses the layup. Berger. They get it over to Trace High. Berger in the corner. Pass inside to Plants. Shot is good.
Cockerell gets it over to Busada. Monahan, a nice feed for Busada, and the lane is good. Guarded by Monahan. Gets the bucket. That's Monahan's second. And Miller makes his free throw. Busada with it. And the ball's on the floor. Last touch by the defenders. So the Pacers will keep it. Cockroll gives it off to Monahan. Monahan with the floater over Miller is good. Plants. The active hands, high post. And get it over to Berger. Tony, high post. Jack, get in, Jack. Back up to Sidman. Into the corner to Berger. Cross court pass for high. He drives, finds Miller. Miller's shot is good. Cockrell finds Busada. He drives on plants. Floater is good for Adam Busada. And he has nine points. Sidman for three, no good. Tipped around. Cockrell somehow comes up with it. Busada gets the hoop and the harm. So he will go to the line for one more. So Cockrell will take a seat. John Grassi has checked in for the first time tonight. The 5'8", sophomore, number five. So Busada will have one more. Shot is short. Berger in the corner. Sidman in the corner. They get it back up to go. Gives it off to Miller. And the bucket is good. 31 point lead for the Pacers. Grassi will bring it up. Filippo is fouled. He will head to the line for two. These will be Filippo's first free throws of the year. First one's no good. Miller with the rebound. Go, go, go. 
Sidman finds Berger. The floater is good. The fadeaway jumper, rather, is good for Berger. Rossi played a lot of point guard for the Pacers last year, but hasn't seen as much time on the floor this year. Nice pass inside to Busada, and he gets the nice friendly roll. Ball went right around the world, around the rim, and it fell. They find High, and he'll be fouled, appears by Busada. And it is on Busada. First free throw, no good. So Monahan and DeGroote will take a seat. And two more sophomores, Zach Tinkham. The 5'9", sophomore number four. And Eric Sika, the six foot sophomore, number 10, have checked in. Tinkham, if you remember, went down with a knee injury at the end of last year. That shot is good. Nice play to go to the hoop. Guerrero's shot is good. Grassi over to DiFilippo. DiFilippo for three, no good. Busano with the rebound, and the putback is good. High in the corner. Whoa, drives. Shot no good, Grassi with the board. 621 to play in the first half. Busada with the bucket. Second half, I should say. And Adam Busada with 13 points. A great performance for the freshman. High for three. That's good. Busada with it, gets it over to Grassi. Grassi for three, that's good! John Grassi with five points. Marvin, guarded by Sika, drives a block, I think. And DiFilippo stepped out of bounds. So Busada will take a seat, as well as Tommy DiFilippo. Brendan Davies will check in, the 5'10 freshman number 15. A local product out of Mid Valley High School. I believe, if I remember correctly, I believe that's Nicolo's high school. So Davies for three, that's long. Sika with the board. Shot no good. Guo bringing it the other way. Shot no good. And it goes out of bounds. Rad Kalinowski is the other one to check in. Also a product of Mid Valley. The 5'10", freshman number 11. Tinkham drives on Miller. Shot no good. And it'll be a jump ball, and it will stay here. 83-49 the score, and a timeout will be taken by the Pacers, probably just to give them a little, a little bit of a breather.
So if some of you may know, we all live on campus. I live on campus, and a bunch of the guys here live on campus. And I live in one of the apartments in the Woodlands. And the, the apartment with a lot of the basketball players, namely Jeremy Ringland, who coincidentally is my RA, which is kind of cool. Let's see who else. Tommy DiFilippo, John Grassi, Zach Tinkham. They all live next door to me. So I have developed a, a pretty good friendship with them. I lived in Lagrin Hall with some of them last year. Gotten to know pretty much everybody on the basketball team, but more importantly, the sophomores, the guys that are my age that I've come to really be friends with over the years, along with John Grassi as well. John Grassi and I are actually trying to plan a day where we go to play golf. We've been trying to plan that for a while as that pass is stolen away by Berger. But he told me a couple of, a couple of months ago that he plays. So we thought we'd try to find a day. It just never worked out. Maybe we'll figure it out in the spring. But Tinkham drives on Miller. Shot no good. Miller comes down with the board. Whoa, inside to Miller. Miller backing down, shot no good. Sika with the rebound. Sika gives it off to Grassi. Grassi drives, shot no good, and Miller comes up with it. Almost fell right back into the hands of Grassi. Three thirty-five to play. Guo drives on Sika, shot is good. Sika, the lone pacer to not record a basket this year. It's only a matter of time, I'm hoping he gets it in this one. Drive by Berger, shot is good. The Pacers have led by as many as 33. Kalinowski steps through but misses the shot. Guo bringing it up the court, two on one. High misses. Davies tipped it to Sika, so the Pacers will get it back. Grassi will bring it up. Almost stepped over half court. Kalinowski wide over to the corner for three, that's good. And Brad Kalinowski gets himself on the board. And he gets himself a rebound. Tinkham back to Kalinowski. Take him for three, no good. Foul's gonna be on Sika. Sika didn't think so, but he kinda just laughed it off. Pacers season high in points is 87. And that came in the win over King's College here at home. Guo is fouled. He will take three shots. Fouls on Sika. First one's good. That's Guo's first free throws today. And the second one is good. Actually, those are his first free throws all year. And he goes two of three from the line. Grassi 
Grassi. And a foul is called on Grassi. Say he pushed out with his elbow. Guo had only played eight minutes total this year before tonight. He's doubled that in this one. Coming the other way, Kalinowski finds Sika. Cross court to Kalinowski. Kalinowski for three, no good. And it's hit off Miller, off Kalinowski. So it will go the other way. We're a minute five remaining. Miller backing down, shot no good, gets his own rebound, and he's fouled by Grassi. So Miller is at the line for two. He's only a 59% free throw shooter as he misses that one. Hey, box out, let's go, box! And it's no good. And it will go back to the Pacers. Shot clock and game clock separated by about 22 seconds. Sika drives and he's got his first points of the year. Knocked away. Tankum is fouled. And the Pacers are just gonna run out the clock. They eclipse their season high in points. And that will do it. So the Marywood Pacers pick up their second conference win of the year in decisive fashion, knocking off Clark Summit University, 88-56. Tip Schwartz led the way for the Pacers with 19 points. James Curley had 16. Jack DeGroote with 14. And Adam Busada with 13. So that will do it for our coverage of Pacers men's basketball here on TVM. Be sure to tune in to our next telecast, which will take place next Tuesday night when the Pacers men and women have another doubleheader when they will take on Keystone College. So from all of us here at TVM, have a great night. And once again, the final score, the Pacers defeat Clark Summit. 88-56.